Well, hi, everyone, and welcome again to the Effective Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Jackson, and today I have my good friend, Laura, here to join me. Laura is from Educating Laura on Instagram, Instagram, make sure I actually pronounce that correctly, and also has her own podcast, uh, After the Bell, which uh, we recently actually recorded uh, me on your podcast, and yes. it's lovely to have you now join me for my podcast, Laura. So thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. It's nice to be here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, now, one of the things that we always talk about on this podcast is yeah, we focus on how we can help students become lifelong learners and so I thought I'll get you on here and ask you what strategy do you use in your classroom or what things do you think really help to create uh, lifelong learners in your classroom how, how do you help your students along that pathway my biggest thing really is to understand who you are as a learner I think and I think the more you can do around encouraging students to know who they are, how they learn, who they learn well with, what kinds of things foster learning for them is very empowering. And for me, offering choice, differentiating different tasks allows students to see that we don't all learn the same way. So for some students, it would be in English, for example, essay plans and essay writing. For other students, it might be a conversation. It might be mind mapping. And I think that the more you can deconstruct that idea that we all learn one way and there's one way to be effective, it's actually really liberating to know that if you're a kinesthetic learner, it's not that you're not good at school. It's that the way in which good learning is projected to you is not real for you because you don't fit into that classic mould. And so for me, especially at the senior levels, I'll often do some kind of quiz or survey to work out what kind of learner my students are. And then from there, there's also subcategories within that. So auditory learners can also be sort of musical as well. And then I'll actually share with my students who's what in the classroom so that they can see that within this class. And unfortunately, from what I've seen, tend, what I tend to find is that your visual learners tend to be your top echelon of the kids within your room. The auditory kind of oscillate between and generally it's those kinesthetic learners that tend to be the ones that struggle the most in class and sometimes it's just nice to see that it's actually not you it's the fact that there's things that are not catered to you so let's cater to you if you're an if you're a kinesthetic learner let's actually give you a task that focuses on moving your body and physically getting involved with the information rather than copying down notes rather than visually looking at a powerpoint And I think that's really, really empowering because that's something that you can take forever. Once you know that it's not because you can't learn, but but that you haven't been given the opportunity to learn the way you need to, that creates a lifelong learner because you know exactly how you need to deal with information, gather information, synthesize information. And that's something you can have forever. Yeah, I actually talk about them as like learning preferences uh, as well. So because what I find is that students, they can learn in other ways but it's not the way they prefer to learn. It's not the way they enjoy learning. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so it's definitely very positive and impactful when we do think, well, how do you actually prefer to learn and how can we then cater to that in this this kind of sense? So with this approach, then if you're going to find out your preferred learning styles for your students, how does that actually then help them to become lifelong learners? So the first thing I think is I need to understand what strategies go with which type of learning style and to model that in class science is a really good way of doing it because especially during revision I would have you know my auditory learners having exam questions that they would have to discuss and and pour over and really tease out I would often have my visual learners to be mind mapping or highlighting or color coding doing something quite visual and then my kinesthetic learners would be doing puzzles they'd be potentially um, running laps and having conversations or doing something physical in which they could engage with that information, even running with a podcast in things like that, I'd ask them to be doing for homework. And once they realized that they could choose any of these ways and they've had an opportunity to try different ones, they know that when there's something that they don't know that I'll look up a podcast or, you know, I'll find that information and I'll color code it. So they can then find the information that they need and synthesize it in a way that makes sense to them because they've trialed so many different ways and seen it work in class. And I think that's what we need to be offering students is so many strategies that they can then take with them once they leave the classroom. Yeah, I I definitely agree with the idea that 
students need to be learning strategies that best suit them, uh, mm. that are the ways that they like to learn, the way that gets them motivated and energetic and excited about their learning too. And I think, mm. yeah, so learning styles is definitely one way that you can get into that. Um, yeah, for your, for your students, for sure. So the last question that I have for you is, yep. can you please provide us just one thing, if the teacher's going to do something this week to help us students to become lifelong learners what is one thing that they can do this week in their classroom to help get their students moving forward in that direction I would say survey students find out who they are as learners that would be my biggest thing I can give you um, a link you can just online it's about 15 minute quiz it comes up with how they learn what kind of strategies that they can use and then from there you can create study groups with them you can differentiate different revision tasks or different um, study techniques I think that would be the easiest thing to do survey them find out who they are get them to understand who they are and then offer them strategies to develop their learning style with people that learn like them yeah and I'll definitely I'll put that link in on yeah. my show notes page and this is for those of you listening this is episode 82 and so mm-hmm. if you would like to get the show notes you just head over to teacherspd.net slash 82 and you can find the show notes there'll be a link to yeah, to how the place where we go and find out yep. what learning styles our students prefer, and there'll also be links there so that you can go and find out uh, more about Laura, connect with her on Instagram, and go and start listening to her podcast, which is called After the Bell. Uh, so, Laura, thank you so much for joining me. Such a pleasure. It was great to chat with you, Dan. Thank you.